All right, thanks for watching. And today I wanna to show you something really cool. Namely, without using L'Hopital's rule, and even without using logarithms, I wanna show you that three to the n goes to infinity much faster than n cubed. In other words, exponential functions generally go much faster to infinity than do power functions. And in fact, I want to show you something even more general. So I want to show you that if p is a real number and a is a real number that's bigger than 1, then the limit as n goes to infinity of n to the p over a to the n goes to uh, 0. So in general, a to the n goes to infinity much faster than n to the p. Now, here's the thing. So problem is p is not an integer, but that's not a big problem because let's fix an integer bigger than p. So if you want step one. So fix k an integer with k bigger than p. And then, the thing is, we let n go to infinity. So you can assume that n is very large. In particular, let n be bigger than 2k. Then, if n is bigger than 2k, again, n is very big. So this is k and this is n, much bigger. And we can write, so let's now study, for instance, the denominator a to the n. And ideally, we want to show a to the n is bigger than something. So then, well, first of all, a to the n, you can write this as 1 plus b to the n, where b is just a minus 1, which is positive. Why did I write it this way? Because then you can use the binomial theorem, which shows this is 1 to the n plus n 1 to the n minus 1 b plus, and in general the term is n choose k, uh, 1 to the n minus k, and b k like Burger King. But I do want to say this k is fixed, right? We fix k here. And so in particular, what do we know? We know that a to the n, it's 1 plus nb plus dot 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 plus n choose k, b to the k plus dot dot dot. But the point is all of those things, they're positive terms, or at least non-negative. So this a to the n is definitely bigger than n choose k, b to the k. So that was kind of the first step. And the second step is just studying this term n choose k. Now, step two. Okay. n choose k, again, that is n factorial over k factorial, n minus k factorial. But that's just the same thing as saying n times n minus 1 times blah, 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 times n minus k minus 1 over k factorial. And what we want to show is that each of the terms is actually bigger than n over 2. And how do we show that? Well. Let's look at the smallest term. And in fact, let's do something worse. Let's look at an even smaller term. So note the following. Uh, look at n minus k. If we show this is bigger than n over 2, then all the other terms, which are bigger anyway, are also bigger than n over 2. But what do we know? Remember, we, n wasn't arbitrary. We said n is very big. It's bigger than 2k. But n is bigger than 2k. So k, it's smaller than n over 2. 
and therefore minus k, it's bigger than minus n over 2, and therefore n minus k, it's bigger than n minus n over 2, but that's n over 2. So in particular, this term here, n minus k, is bigger than n over 2. And therefore, in this denominator, all the terms are bigger than n over 2. You see, because the worst term here, it's also bigger than n over 2. And therefore, what do we know about n choose k? Well, it's bigger than n over 2 times n over 2, etc., etc., times n over 2. So, okay, look at this for a second. So, n choose k is then bigger than n over 2, n over 2, dot, 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 times n over 2, over a k factorial. But then the question is, how many terms are there? Well, it turns out there are as many terms as k, so there are k terms. And you can do this by counting the number before. And so this really becomes, ah, wonderful, n over 2 to the kth power, again, k terms, over k factorial, which becomes n to the k over 2 to the k times k factorial. Okay, that's very good. So that was n choose k. And now we want to go back to a to the n. What did we find? a to the n is bigger than, I think, n choose k times Burger King. And now we know this is bigger than n to the k over 2 to the k times k factorial times b to the k. And this is very good because now we can study, go back and study the term n to the p over a to the n. Because that was the main uh, guest of the party, in some sense. So I think, uh, step three? I don't remember. Uh, now look at n to the p over a to the n. Well, on the one hand, this is positive, so that's fine. But now, what do we know? We know a to the n is bigger than that. So, 1 over a to the n, it's smaller than this whole thing. n to the k over 2 to the k, k factorial, b to the k. But then, this just simplifies to, so uh, we get n to the p o minus k, and then 2 to the k, k factorial, over b to the k. But here's the thing. This thing is just a constant. It's a constant that doesn't depend on n, because remember, we first fixed k, and then we chose n. And now, what do we know about p minus k? Well, remember, how did we choose k? We chose it so that p is bit less than k, and therefore p minus k, uh, it, uh, it's less than zero. So in particular, what do we know? We know that n to the p over a to the n, it's at least bigger than or equal to zero, but also less than or equal constant n to p minus k. But you see, this exponent is negative. So actually, this thing here goes to zero as n goes to infinity. It's like 1 over n squared or something. It goes to zero. And therefore, to conclude, what do we know? We know that the limit as n goes to infinity of zero is just zero. And the limit as n goes to infinity of c n p minus k it's zero. So last but not least, by the squeeze theorem, we know that the middle thing goes to zero. So by squeeze, the limit of the middle thing goes to zero. Uh, n to the p over a to the n equals zero. Isn't that beautiful? It's like, um, uh, again, beautiful because we did not use L'Hopital's rule, we did not use any logarithms. So I think that's very neat. 
All right, thank you very much.